When on a camping holiday, free advice is easy to come by. Lots of people have done this many times and they like to lavish advice on the obvious rookies, such as my wife and I. One of the bits of free advice that is uh, particularly useful is the advice to clear the radiator of grass seeds. As you can see, we have got a small grass seed problem here. Now, to those of you who are not mechanically minded, like me, and in fact my wife, the problem with something like this is that it creates a blockage in the radiator or stops the radiator being able to do its job, which of course is to cool down the engine. And an overheated engine in the middle of the Kalahari, in a place like this where no one will come for days, is dangerous. says I'm doing a great job. Here we have got springbuck. This particular springbuck has just relieved himself on sighting us, which I always take as a good sign. Most male mammals share at least one behavioral trait. That is the necessity to fight over lady mammals. These rams are like two men in a bar, fighting over a lady in the hopes of a conjugal event. Note that she has long since disappeared, bored and generally disillusioned with the standard of male in her species. They fail to notice her absence, hyped up as they are on testosterone, competitive zeal, and possibly some sort of herbal desert Jaeger bomb. I'll see them coming. Can't find the Got it. Finally, after two weeks of desperate staring at the national animal of South Africa, Antidorcus marsupialis decided to grace us with bronking. and what a magnificent display it was. Happy family, we live at the foot of the great fir tree. Flopsy and Mopsy and little Cottontail. And I never remember the next little bit. And Peter. That is from Beatrix Potter's Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit came from an environment very different from the one we're sitting in here. Here, we're in the arid Kalahari. Peter Rabbit came from a small bucolic village in the Midlands of England. Although Mr. McGregor was a very nasty farmer who nearly put Peter Rabbit in a pie. What are you talking about? The threats he faced, compared with the threats faced by the Springbok, Hartebeest and Hemsbok of this region, do not compare. <laughs> Mm, nice focus pull to the sun. Here we go. <clears throat> Sit on the melon, why don't you? 
It is our last morning here in Botswana at Gnu's Gnu's camp and we found this spectacular example of a tama melon. Now the tama melon, much like its cousin, distant cousin, the Chimspok cucumber, is a very important source of water for animals that live out here. Not so much this year because there's been so much rain, but both animals and humans who used to live in this area depend on this hugely for water. I'm led to believe that it is massively, massively bitter. It smells so like watermelon. We will taste it. it. Smells like watermelon. Mm, I thought it was going to be pink inside due to its color. You thought it was going to be pink inside. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a baby watermelon. It's pretty flavorless. It's not bad though. I always thought it was bitter. The other one is nicer. It's cucumber. Mm. It's just no pleasing some people. We have returned to South Africa wiser than we once were. And here, immediately, we have got some animals in the Nossop River. My wife is sitting next to me, feeling pensive about our return to the coronavirus-infested part of the world that is our home. No, there are no velociraptors in the Khalakhadi, but there are dinosaurs. This dinosaur is an ostrach. Despite being blessed with a weaponized nail on its big toe and the speed of a lion, it is predominantly vegan. That said, teeth, shells and bones have been found in the tummies of deceased ostrach, indicating that, like many of their human counterparts, these vegans supplement their diet with animal periodically. A bebe ustrach emerges from its eggy, an eggy with the volume of two dozen chicken eggies, looking like a hedgehog crossed with a snake and a caramel pudding. It is an insufferably cute creature. But being a ready-made meal in an environment with little cover and tiny-brained parents that could be described as lax at best and criminally inept at worst, they have just a 15% chance of making it to the high school prom. That's what it looks like it might have a dump. I'm rest assured if it does, it will be spectacular. Huh? Told you. Fantastic. Shot of the day. Oh. We can rest easy now. Just needed to walk out of frame. Second last night of the honeymoon adventure. Clothes are creased, smelling a little iffy. And we've decided to see how the professionals take a game drive in the Khalakhadi. And so my wife and I will go on the evening game drive from Nossop from 6 p.m. to 20.30 p.m. There is a truck waiting over there for us. It has got 20 seats in it and I can see that a number of them are already occupied by very small human beings and therefore probably not very quiet human beings. Who knows what we'll see. Yeah. Bit of a sad day today. We are leaving Nossop and heading down towards Twirafiran for our very last night on honeymoon. My wife and I are feeling slightly bereft about this. Well, now we're going on a little trip around Nossop camp on foot to see if we can find 
the yellow mongoose. People around here tend to be quite sort of, um, well, interested in the affairs of others, shall we say. So they, they drive around on their way out of the camp, past everybody else's camp, and in so doing, uh, look very concernedly at everybody. There goes the squirrel. One is minded of the magnificent squirrel experiences we had at Le Cholo A word my wife still struggles to say. Try. Le Cholo 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 No. Never mind. There's also a slightly mournful feeling because coronavirus seems to be shutting this place down. So people are having to get out of the park by the end of tomorrow. Oh, here is he. Here is he. Now, as the sun sets on the 24th of March, we travel the same road that we did so many weeks before on our very first game drive in the Khalakhadi. We feel nostalgic as we go for a final trip down to a water hole where we shall consume gin and tonic and hopefully be accompanied by a number of the Khalakhadi's iconic creatures. Oh, there's a meerkat. Rubbish. Yeah, well, it's rubbish. <laughs> Cheers. It's a wonderful honeymoon. Were you trying to drink with the lid closed? I was. <laughs> with nine minutes to go until the end of the holiday, my wife has pulled one out of the bag. She shouted, snake, as we were looking at a little nest, in fact, a huge nest of sociable weavers. There's a snake. There, yeah, up there. And there it was, the Cape Cobra, snuffling about in the nest. Here she is, triumphant. <coughs> and then she brought her considerable skills to bear by operating the camera and getting a shot of the holiday with nine minutes to go. We are now rushing for the gate. Hopefully we will make it, because to be fined after such a very fine, fine, see what I did there, would be a travesty. 